Hi, welcome. My name is Brittany and welcome to my channel here on YouTube. I am here in Northwest Canada on the traditional territory of the Kwamundun First Nations, Natan Kwachan, and also what I call White Horse Yukon. So right next to Alaska, I am up here loving wool, like really, really loving wool, and really, really loving crafting in multiple, mostly just one craft knitting. As you can see, I'm knitting away. Um, it has been about a month since the last time I made a video, and not gonna lie, this is the second time I filmed this. The uh, first time, I just felt like there was so much, <laughs> so much in it. So I'm gonna scale back. I'm gonna show you some some things that I'd like you to see. And anything else you could probably view on Instagram. So you can find me at Crux Fibers on Instagram. On Ravelry, you can also find me as in um, Crux Fibers. And obviously here on the YouTube's Crux Fibers. Crux is my hand dyed yarn business, as well as um, hand processed or hand dyed yarn. I process fleeces, I source from Canada as much as I can. I hand dye Canadian yarns. I also hand dye a Canadian sourced and imported yarns. Um, but today I would like to talk to you about a few um, objects I have that are finished and a few works in progress and a few acquisitions. So first up is a hat that I knit out of a yarn which would have gone to the burn pile if it weren't for Leanna of Lone Sequoia Ranch. Um, Leanna rescued a bunch of fleeces and this line of yarn that she calls is Waste Not Wool, named after her grandmother. She and her grandmother didn't like waste, so I'd always say Waste Not. And so I dyed my colorway Beaver Lodge. And this hat here is called the Stardust Hat by Carly Perrins of the Northwoods Knit Co. She's in Northern BC. And I've topped it with a little fox fur pom-pom from here in the Yukon. And the mohair here is held double with ptarmigan, a colorway of mine. It is um, the Waste Not Wool. This one here, this yarn, I have 50 skeins of it. It's a North Country Cheviot, a down wool. And it is mixed with Texel. Uh, I believe the Texel is the one that adds a little more luster to this colorway. It is really cozy, really, really warm. I've knit, oh gosh, three, four, maybe five of these hats. Carly and I did a collaboration last year or the year before. I can't quite remember. Um, it's a lovely hat. I really love the construction. I um, used the recommended needle size, but I knit the third size because my gauge was bigger. So I just, yeah, just knit uh, the youth size. I can't remember. I'm going to double check. But anyways, this hat will be coming with me to Knit City because I'm going to be vending at Knit City. And I really love it. Here is the raw form of the yarn. Not raw. The undyed. Spun at Custom Woolen Mills. So it is a woolen spun yarn. It's very light. This whole hat just is very airy, very light, very, very warm. I love it. It's really, really, really nice. So, yeah, I didn't have that cast on, but I did show you guys the yarn the last time I made a video. And the last time I also showed, show, showed you um, a camisole that I was knitting. It's called the Svilla, and it's by Kadri. I don't actually know where she's from. I feel like possibly... Possibly Europe? But I could be wrong. Anyways, the Svilla camisole I knit in my silk linen yarn base and so this is a sample that will be coming with me to Knit City in my colorway I'm thinking of calling it fresh linen but is that too too cliche what do you think should I call it fresh linen because it's really nice and it's like a warm tone I don't know 
it's maybe it's not warm. I think I get mixed up. I see warm tones in it, but I also see cool tones because of the silk and just the different toning that you can see happening. Uh, the actual yarn base is more white, closer to like this color. So it is hand dyed, but it's warmed up. So I was going to call it fresh linen, but hey, what do you guys think? What, what should I call this yarn base? Yarn colorway. Uh, let me know in the comments. Doo -doo -doo. It's such a drapey yarn. I love it. Fabric. Drapey fabric. Get my words right, hey? I like the details. I use the needles called for and I knit the size for the 42 inch bust. I don't remember which size that is, but I could have done a size smaller. So that is a really lovely camisole. I knit it longer. I like my shirts longer. I didn't do any modifications. I knit the straps the 10 inches and I should have probably done maybe eight inches. So I'm going to go back and either stitch it down or just undo the kitchener stitch but I had to you kitchener stitch the sleeves um yeah that silk linen yarn base that I'm dying is really nice um so for those of you who have like allergies to wool silk linen this one it's 65% silk and 35% linen uh and the short I'm I believe the short shorter fibers from linen because linen is actually a very long fiber and then they What's it? I think it's called a hawk or something where they have to comb the, the linen to get it stringy for spinning. And then there's the little short bits that are left for um, making yarn out of. That's my understanding. So, yeah, I just have those two finished objects. Um, since we, I last made a video, I've had lots of works in progress um, on my needles. I'm just knitting things for. Uh, the festivals, some samples, and so also since the last time we spoke, I um, received back from Wellington Fiber Mills uh, my new mill run of my Gotland yarn, which comes from Crocus Country Shepherdess. So these fleeces I select from Sierra's flock, and I'm gonna hopefully not lose some needles. I should have not stopped mid row. <laughs> Isn't that classic podcaster thing? Stop mid row and try to show you my project. Uh, so this is the Find Your Fade by Andrew Mowry. I had a moment there. You can see it fading along. Oh, I just love it. And I'm calling this shawl my single flock fade because it's all the yarn is from a single flock that I had special, specially spun um, at Wellington Fiber Mills. Donna is a wonderful person to work with as far as getting yarn spun. She's done a sock yarn for me. She's done a Romney worsted, um, worsted weight yarn for me. And now this. And well, I got cut off. I had to delete some video. Anyways, I was saying how Donna is a really wonderful person to work with at the mill. Um, and I just feel like she gets done what I hope to get done with um, the fleeces I've sent her. So, yeah, I, what can I say about this shawl? I'm working, um, the pattern calls for seven different colors, but I had six in it from the flock. And I uh, didn't gauge swatch. It's just a shawl. I don't usually gauge swatch for shawls unless I'm worried about yardage, but... In this case, not so much. Um, so far, I've used up almost all of the yarn from each skein, and the yarns vary in um, they vary in weights and yardage. But the yards are coming out to be more of a like DK to sport yardage. Uh, but the actual gauge, I would say, is more sport to heavy fingering. So Gotland cross breeds. Um, have less just they, they produce less yardage in their wools because they're not fine a fine wool but this oh my goodness you guys this is just glorious and absolutely wonderful um i mean can you say that you've met a project with yarn that came from a single flock or one sheep and i just i love that i love knowing where my yarns come from and 
So this shawl is going to be extremely special and I'm hoping to have leftovers to, again, you know, make something for the shepherdess. She doesn't knit. I don't even think she has time to knit. So I'd love to create something for her to wear. And this shawl is going to be huge. It's going to be so big. So we started the dark and we're getting to the lighter. Isn't that just a lovely fade? I love that it goes really dark and then to like, you know, half of that tone through. And then the final color from this will be there. So <laughs> this there, sorry. Um, there we go. So not like a typical, well, typical fade. Um, but grayscale fade and I love that. I just love it. I'm so excited about this yarn. Um, I'm going to be launching it at Knit City and I feel so, <laughs> I do feel kind of bad saying I'm launching everything at Knit City and not everybody's going to be at Knit City, but I'm hoping that I'll have leftover yarns to share. So yeah, that's what I'm knitting on. And then um, I'm also wearing a single flock sweater. This I knit Oh dear, maybe close close to two years ago. This is the Felix Pullover by, oh gosh, who's that by? Is it Amy Christopher's? I can't remember. I'll, put, I'll link it down below and you probably know this sweater anyways. Um, the Felix Pullover increases in the raglan and with like nice little lacy details. Um, this actually came from one sheep called Audrey and it was an Erin Waite three ply from Fiber and Forge. She's got a nice flock that she gets her yarn spun and all natural shades. Um, she's got Gotland, VFL, Shetland, I can't remember everything else but she's got a really nice flock and a really nice farm stand in um, I think she's in BC. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing and it's really cozy. Uh, I've had to depill it just once, but otherwise it's a nice natural shade, hey? Like the sheep has a nice, um, warm, light fleece and with, uh, I think she's a Shetland Gotland cross, so she has some nice luster in there too, but otherwise the Shetland is really, looks kind of prominent in there with that halo right there. So, I really like it. I think I knit to... I think I knit this, this sweater to the pattern. I don't even, I gauge swatched, got gauge. I don't remember what size I knit, but I'm a 42 inch bust. So if you look at the pattern, that's the size I, I knit. I'm gonna link those details down below. That's what I'm wearing. And this is my bun whip that I've been working on nonstop for the last, oh gosh, week and a half. And I'm obsessed, just obsessed. Everything is sort of like shawls and camisoles right now. So, yeah, that I've been working on. But actively working on to be this shawl. And I also just cast it on um, a dress. This is the Easy Eyelet, Easy Eyelet Yoke Dress by Knit Knititude. I'm knitting the size 4. And the yarn that I'm using is a Corydale four ply yarn that I'm dyeing, but I'm using undyed in this to highlight the mohair. So this yarn I already have a sample being crocheted by a sampler to sort of highlight the yarn in crocheted garments. But I needed something also knitted, but I also wanted to highlight some more mohair, which I know the mohair is in this hat that I just showed. Da -da -da! But I wanted to show it over top of another another yarn. And so this dress is it's a nice big gauge actually. Let me see. Yeah, I'm using well, I went down needle sizes to about five millimeter. I knit continental and often I'm end up, I end up being just looser. So yeah, this is gonna be a nice airy fabric. I'm really hoping I could have a dress knit by the end of September. I think I can. I just, um, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I just need to focus on the, um, the knits that I'm doing for the show. 
So yeah, the mohair I'm using is my hand dyed mohair called Ptarmigan. It's a colorway I have dyed many times. On mohair, it's a lot more subtle. I think this batch that I dyed was just a little lighter on the speckly. I go by pinch, size the pinch, or my little sieve. So yeah, it's a really nice, fun pattern. It's going to be quick, I think, um, especially since all the other samples I've been knitting are like fingering weight to sport weight yarns. It's going to be nice to have something a little thicker gauged. Yeah. Um, the other thing I have on my needles that I've been working on is also just another tank top by Kadri, like the Svilla. Did I tell you that, that that was a Svilla tank top? This is the Svilla tank top. And this one's the Allure, so also knit top down. I haven't added the straps, you usually add them at the end. Although I would like to add them soon so I can give this a try on. And this is in my colorway Beaver Lodge. The hat was also in Beaver Lodge. You can see the difference in the color. Alpaca is in this yarn base, which is, so the yarn base is 45% alpaca, 35% linen, and the rest is silk, Tessa silk. So this one feels more stiff than the silk linen. So this one has a little bit more structure. It still has some drape, but it has a bit more structure, which is kind of funny because both all those fibers are naturally uh, just drapey. Um, and this yarn is more of a fingering weight yarn. I'm using my Chiagu needles. Um, I'm not enjoying the Chiagu needles on this knit because I've had to go down to that really fine cable with a very thin tips. <laughs> so when I'm knitting in the round with my Chiagus, I usually use a smaller needle on my left hand, my in my left hand, and then the needle for gauge. And that is so that I can knit faster. So I haven't really knit on this at all in several weeks because I've been focused on that shawl and some new cast ones. But yeah, anyways, those are the whips that I wanted to show you guys. Um, I recently got a new little basket from my local yarn shop. This is a big blue mama basket. And um, yeah, let's show you some acquisitions. I recently also got a really wonderful spindle from Alan Berry. He's on Instagram. You, Alan Berry is his name, A-L-L-E-N Berry. And he hand carves spindles with no tools, just, sorry, no um, electric tools, just by hand, traditional carving tools. And I told him I wanted something with uh, ravens, poppies, and king's throne, my favorite mountain. And he did the raven and the poppies on the spindle. This is really lovely. It spins very, very nice. I'm very, very impressed. Um, he's a wonderful artist. Just, just a wonderful artist. So I got that spindle and I've spun a little bit. All of my support spindles are, are um, getting this fin fiber spun on it. I'm just practicing my, my support spindling and getting better at it. And then, um, oh dear. So tired. This could be a short one. <laughs> uh, I also got some new yarn acquisitions from Crafting Crack and Made on Instagram. Uh, her business is actually called Crack and Made. Here's our little card. Oops, one moment. Hang tight. So I was excited about her new yarn bases that she was coming out with. This is a merino silk stellina, all at untreated. Um, not super washed yarns and they're really nice um, this is a lovely color I plan on using these yarns in a project for Sybil and then this one here is her whirlpool base which is a, two plies of merino untreated so not super washed and one ply of a super washed merino so in the end, the superwash merino is what takes on the dye sharper and more prominent. So you can see a subtle barber pulling. You probably see it more where the green is. Uh, yeah, so these are both, I think, DK. Yeah, both DK. About similar yardage. And 
This one has a tighter ply twist. And this one has a looser ply twist, I think. So this is a, th this is a three ply and I believe this one looks more like a four ply to me. But yeah, so I'm gonna do something for Sybil with these. Those are just hanging out until I can get to them. And yeah, that's about it. I have some other works in progress, but um, I thought maybe I would show you a few things I've been working on. Um, that I'm just really, really loving, really enjoying, and thought maybe I could have a bit more of a chat with you guys since I've usually come on with a lot of finished objects and um, works in progress. I have lots I could show you, but <sighs> I kind of want to sit here and knit with you guys. Um, I'm in our bedroom. I, you have not seen me in this specific location before and I'm sitting in my special chair and behind me is a hide that has come from this flock and I want it's a carpet actually I would like to have it on the floor I just don't trust my bunny um, <laughs> if you're new around here then you will know that or if you won't know that I have an angora bunny and her name's Agnes. We first thought she was an Angus, and we've discovered it's a definitely a she. <laughs> and I have spun some of her wool already, a little bit. So I've blended it with some some uh, Canadian wool that my friend Melissa gave me. It's actually called the BC Burn Pile, and I can show you the yarn too. So this is my hand spun. So that nice halo, you're getting it from Agnes's fluff, as well as the downy wool in here. I've spun this uh, woolen long draw. The prep is woolen, not true. Well, semi, semi woolen. So it's carded, and I did a two ply, and I spun this for the um, tour de fleece with my team, the Stash Dashers. Uh, yeah. That was nice. I actually, since since spinning that, I've, um, Agnes actually was shedding or molting. Or shedding? Yeah, she was shedding a lot. So I was able to get like, I think I have combed out of her another 30 grams of fiber. So I'm told that next year will be, she'll be a higher wool producer for, for her size. She's, um, a satin cross angora rabbit so she has a nice luster to her and apparently the reason why her her wool looks shiny is because her fiber is actually translucent so because it's translucent the light that shines on her gets reflected back or goes on so that's really cool um, I've been learning a lot about bunnies <laughs> And we have allowed our bunny to be free roaming. So at night she hangs out in our master bathroom to sleep and just be on our own and not not get not get up to mischief with our cat. Um, and then during the day she's free roaming. So right now I think she left and she's underneath our couch and she'll hang out there for the rest of the afternoon just sleeping. So kind of like a cat in the sense that they keep sleeping but they're also not like a cat or a dog as far as a pet pet goes are very they need you they um they want lots of pets they really don't like their back end or their back being touched they'd rather have their head their ears touched so i'm doing a lot of petting and she eats a lot of veggies probably more veggies than our entire household and hay and pellets and a few few uh bunny treats yeah so, um, we just had family visit us for a few weeks. We went out fishing. We went to the cabin. I did some knitting there. I finished spinning all of the yarn for my tour de fleece. And I did a, my very first four ply yarn. So each ply is different. One ply was um, some fiber I, I blended with um, 
It's my hand dyed yarn and it's barely heathered. Another ply was a white Romney from my friend Melissa. Another ply was all of the samples that I kept from fleeces from Crocus Country Shepherdess that I carded together. And so that was like a light gray color. And I plied it together thinking, oh, this is really beautiful. This would be a nice three ply. And then my friend, um, or yeah, Akara Yarns had sent me this other bat that was very green, kind of like Oscar the Grouch kind of green. And I was thinking, oh, well, if I spin this and blend this, I don't know if it'll be, or ply it, I don't know if it'll be very nice. But I decided to just spin some and do a sample. And this is it. So I have 400 grams of this yarn. It's a four ply. Oh, it's really nice. I haven't actually checked the um, the gauge yet or the yardage. Oh, but it's so squishy. I did it all um, long draw and semi woolen prepped. It's just really beautiful. I love. I just love the subtleness. I love that it's gray but with warm tones because I. I think that's what I gravitate mostly to. I wear a lot of like neutral colors and grays, but I also really love those warm tones like my Beaver Lodge colorway. And so that was really enjoyable to spin and it was nice to be able to have uh, some finished yarn for the Tour de Fleece, which I mean, it wasn't, it was just more like for fun, not anything serious or anything. So yeah, so I did that at the cabin. I spun that yarn. And, yeah, I mean, like, when you get together with family, it's usually lots of conversation over meals. We had a lot of meals together. It was, there was a lot of us. My husband has three siblings and his parents, and then there's the significant others and all the kids. There's only three kids, but still, it was a lot of us. Um, and then, apart from that, I've just kept, I've been busy with dyeing yarn for these yarn festivals, and I have... 10 different yarn bases and the Gotland will be undyed. I never dye that yarn. I just think it's too precious to dye and I love it gray. I just want, I want you to have an experience of looking at this yarn and seeing a flock, knitting with it, knowing that it's come from something so traceable and so pure and from sheep that are just really well cared for. Um, so yeah, when in uh, in Edmonton in November, I will be after the festival. I will be driving back south, and I'll get to go see Sierra and her all the flocks, oh, all the sheep in the flock, and finally give Nora a lovely big hug. So hopefully she won't be skittish or yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I'm looking forward to taking the drive slower south and hoping to visit a few other people. Um, so yeah, if you're in the Vancouver area in September or Edmonton area in um, late November, mid-November, and you plan on coming to these festivals, I would absolutely love to see you and visit, um, however, like at my booth or, I don't know, we'll see. But, um, I'm really looking forward to these festivals. The Dawson Creek one, I really enjoyed for being able to actually just visit and see people because... With running this business outside of my, in my home and then having social medias um, I can feel fairly um, feel fairly isolating but at the same time fairly social because you're interacting with people on different platforms but actually if I think about the amount of times I get to sit down and knit with somebody it's actually very rare with living up here in the Yukon um, I don't know there's the there's two yarn shops, but one that I mainly go to, and uh, I don't know, maybe maybe people just have different lives that aren't centered around wool. Um, but yeah, did I say how much I love wool? Like really, really love wool. Yeah. Um, before I end this video, it is going to be a short one. I wanted to quickly mention the. Um, Great Canadian Wool Along that is being hosted by the Small Bird Workshop. So Catherine Knutson had this idea, and it's a brilliant idea, to um, work with wool or plant fiber from Canada. So that's come from a sheep or it's come from a farm in Canada. And the Great Canadian Wool Along. And if you go to the Small Bird Workshop website, you can see a list of um, vendors. I don't 
yeah, a list of multiple things that you can look up. And I think at the right now, I think she said there's something like 230 participants. I might be a little bit on the high end here, but there's a lot of participants. And that's quite exciting that people want to source some Canadian grown wool and plant fiber. So if you're in the market and you're looking for some Canadian wool, um, my shop does have some Gotland yarn in it right now. Um, not the new stuff, but the other, the previous uh, mill run from there fall fleeces from last year so yeah I hope that if you are intrigued and you're interested that you click that down bar and visit the small bird workshop website to find out how you can participate in the great Canadian wool along of 2022 so that already suggests that there's gonna probably be an annual wool along I can't remember the dates I think it started August 1st and it ends Gosh, I don't know. Maybe in a few months? I don't think it's a year long. It might be. I can't remember. But anyways. Oh, some podcasts you can check out are The Nitty Stew. I'm sure you've already come across her. The Nitty Stew is a Canadian who is a flight attendant traveling around Canada. And she has a lovely podcast. Really fun to hang out with. Um, and she gets to tell us all about the places that she's visiting and the yarn shops that she goes to and she's knitting cute little frogs <laughs> um and some audio podcasts i've been listening to are um 70 over 70 a podcast about how you cope with um getting older or how you do life as you get older and then another one is called connecting disability and it's actually hosted by my good friend megan gilmore out of ottawa and she is a legally blind, wonderful friend hosting this podcast about connecting disability to the world around us. Um, and she's interviewed lots of wonderful people and it's quite eye opening. So I'll link those down below for you to check out. Um, yeah. And I can't remember. Did I say that in this one? Let me know. <laughs> Let me know what you think I should call this colorway. I was thinking fresh linen. <sighs> but is that boring? I don't know. Let me know. And if you like my content and you want to see or you don't want to miss out on uh, my videos, uh, please do feel free to subscribe. Smash that like button. And yeah comment below. Um, I really, really would love to know what you're working on. I love to get inspiration from people. So let me know what you are working on, what you're spinning or uh, yeah, any sort of questions you'd like to ask. You'd like to know. Um, someone did ask me how long have I been knitting for? I have been knitting since I was eight years old, but very actively since I was about 22 years old. I'm 36 now. <laughs> So it's been a long time uh, since I've been knitting. My mom taught me how to cast on and apart from that she's a prolific uh, crocheter so actually all of, the, all of the crocheting I just taught myself from patterns, YouTube, of the likes. Yeah and so I hope you enjoyed this short episode and that you'll tune in next time and hopefully, yeah, hopefully next time I'll have some more finished objects to talk about and less whips, <laughs> um, which you haven't seen them all because I decided to refilm this. <laughs> That's a first. Episode seven is my first retake. Okay. All right. So again, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. I might pop back in two weeks. I'm debating on a more frequent video just because I often have a lot of projects to talk about and these episodes end up feeling kind of long and I'm just seeing the stats go down more and more and more and I just, I really want to get to know some more people. So yeah, be well. See you next time.